You want to know the best way to get good? The way that all the pros got to the top? Well, the answer is, my friends, it's pretty simple. Practice. That's right. If you want to get good, then you got to practice. But here's the thing. Not all practice is good practice. It's not just about how much you train, but how you train. In this video, we're going to talk about how to get the right kind of training, the kind that levels you up. And yes, we're going to tell you to do more than just grind quick play and friendlies until your eyes bleed. One of the best ways to train is to check out the Pro Guys website and listen. We're not just saying it for the advertising. Training you up is literally what we do, and we've been doing it across several games for a while now. We've even got the help of professionals like Zero, even more advanced guys, and live coaches on the line. Our daily content helps you get your practice on every day. And when you're ready, we have one-on-one -on -one coaches to help you hands-on. Check the link in the description for all of that. But we have plenty more to teach you right here in this video. If you're not looking to spin the scratch on that yet, we get it. Don't worry, we won't hold back on the big brain tips. Speaking of the brain, that's where everything begins. A good training regimen focuses on building a strong connection between your brain and your body. When that connection is strong, you start to build muscle memory. Muscle memory is the ability to do complex, difficult things quickly and easily. So how do you build up that connection? Repetitions. Repetitions are a core to good practice. Repeating an action builds up something called the myelin sheath. The myelin sheath is a layer that holds in the electrical energy the brain sends to your body. Basically, when you build up those layers, the signal fires faster and takes less energy. In smash terms, that means that practice isn't just about playing. It's also about repeating useful motions and techniques so that they take less energy and effort. That will mean going to the lab and repeating some techniques over and over again. It also means going into quick play and friendlies with not just winning in mind. You want practice for these techniques so they hold up under pressure. Sounds fun, right? <laughs> Honestly, it can be, but even if it is, it'll be taxing sometimes. You're making your brain and body do a lot of work, but when it comes to training, we all gotta be wee fit mains. Feel the burn in your thighs and glutes. Now, before you practice, you gotta know what to practice. The best learning comes from pushing right at the edge of what you already know. The fancy educator term for that is N plus one. N being what you know now, and one being just one step beyond that. That means you've gotta know what you know before you can grow what you know. Take a step back and think about your level. You might have some short hops in place down, but can you short hop fast fall? Can you do it without looking at your character? Can you land a retreating aerial or a cross up aerial? When you figure out where you're at, try to think about what one step forward looks like. If you can't short hop or fast fall yet, don't jump right into attack canceling. But if you got the standard movement tech 100% down, then definitely start thinking about attack canceling. Raw back airs and more. Ready for those techniques? Check out our dedicated video guides on each, linked right in the description. The same goes for character knowledge. Lots of characters have simple and effective strings that make for good starting points. Focus on those before you focus on the crazy stuff you see MK Leo doing. He makes it look so easy, but trust us, it's not. If you really don't know where your level is, try to record a match and watch it later. You might be missing fast falls or misspacing moves without even knowing it. And that's all right. It's tough to know what mistakes you're making. Now, let's say that you figured out your level. You've got a good idea what you need to work on, so now the question is, how should you work on it? You might be tempted to pause the video right now, open up training mode, and start doing drills until dawn. <laughs> All right, not so fast, eager McBeaver. You may think that's corny, but I think that's funny. Best training isn't the 10-hour grind. Top athletes of all sorts get to their peak by training in short, hyper-concentrated bursts with breaks in between. In the world of gaming, this is something a lot of people need to hear. Since we don't get as physically worn out from games as we would exercise, it's easy to play games for hours on end. The truth is, is that we still get mentally worn out, and the brain is what's building up that myelin sheath and that mind-body connection. So, a top athlete might still practice a lot in a day, but not all at once. And when we say hyper-concentrated, we mean it. The best practice happens when you're laser-focused on what you're doing. So, that means you gotta focus on your task. Twitter rant about hero ledge camping or Wi-Fi can wait until you're done. Don't break up that concentrated moment of practice with an easy distraction. Finish your practice time, then take a break and check out Twitter or find your waifu or husbando in Fire Emblem Three Houses. A big part of staying focused is creating a good environment. Try and think about when you do your best work and what kind of environment creates that. You might want to practice with or around friends who can hold you accountable for slacking off. You might like to practice alone so you don't break concentration or feel judged. In general, you probably want to remove distractions like your phone. <laughs> Trust us on this one. Everyone thinks they're stronger than their phone, but listen. Facebook has a room full of people whose job is to find the most aesthetically appealing chime sound. You aren't beating that. Just put the big distractions like your phone or your computer somewhere else. Fortunately, you're going to have to use a switch, though, and that's like the ultimate distraction machine. You've got everything set up. You got the distractions out of the way. Now it's time to start. 
or is it? Not so fast, Eager McBeaver. I love saying that. Here, most musicians or athletes will do a bit of warming up even before a simple practice or workout, just like playing a piano or basketball. Smash is a physical activity that requires highly developed niche skills. That means warming up is valuable. Warming up can also be pretty fun and easy. It could be just a few character drills, a quick play match or two, or beating the crap out of a CPU for a bit. Physical warm-ups are a good idea too. For Smash, we recommend some hand and wrist stretches. That way, your sick 20XX Fox doesn't give you arthritis down the line, or force you to make an ergonomic arcade-style controller for Smash. Now it's time to go full throttle, max speed, right? No, wrong guys. Until you're topping those locos, you gotta train slowly. Starting off, you wanna repeat motions slowly and gradually bring them up to speed. That way you can find areas where you're making mistakes and correct them. Ultimate Training Mode has just a feature for this too. You can lower the speed of the game right down to the frame. You don't have to go that slow, and for some basic tech, you may not need to go slow at all. But slowing down is good for more advanced stuff like the RAR, the attack cancel, and the frame perfect combo, or any tech you're struggling to physically execute. But training isn't just physical. Get ready because this is our brainest tip yet. To train, you can also mentally practice by visualizing what you need to do. To do this, you gotta picture things in intense detail and try to recreate it as vividly as you can. It might sound crazy, but remember that training is a very mental activity. It's all about building up that myelin sheet and creating quicker pathways your brain can use to communicate with your body. Scientists have run studies on pure mental practice and found that it can be just as effective as real physical practices. Of course, you should still do both if you can. We've covered the actual training process, so let's do a quick cool down. No, we're not gonna be doing any stretches or jogs. Instead, we're gonna give ourselves a pat on the back. Seems a little self-congratulatory, right? <laughs> it is, but that's the point. When you train and train well, you should give yourself a little reward. It seems pretty cliche, but rewarding yourself is a great way to make training feel a bit more fun and special. And fun is important. When Axe, Melee's third highest ranked player, won his first major tournament, he credited his success to having fun. It might seem naive, but it's true. Having fun is powerful. We all start playing Smash because we think it's fun. That fun is a big part of what keeps us going and what makes getting better results worthwhile. Don't forget to enjoy yourself in and out of training. Remember that it's totally okay to make time to play this Nintendo Children's Party game like it's, you know, an actual Nintendo Children's Party game. <laughs> After all, everything's easier when it's fun, right? Just like that, we've reached the end of the video. Go ahead and reward yourselves. You deserve it. The perfect reward for you right now is to click that subscribe button with the bell notifications because then you'll have our daily Smash Ultimate videos delivered right to you. Our tips and tricks will keep you primed and ready for competition. And watching your rank rise is a truly smashing reward. Hey guys, this is your guy, your friend, Keith Allen. If you want to connect with me on my Instagram, I would love to hear from you.